democracy in practice. 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 Hello and welcome. Democracy in Practice on the combined transmission of Liberty Television and Liberty Radio. We're reaching you from Abuja, the Nigerian capital, and thanks for joining us. We'd like to apologize for also taking off a bit late. My name is Mahmoud Tunde Hassan. Something has suddenly gone awful, awfully wrong in the federal capital territory. The prime and quintessential Abuja with sprawling infrastructure is gradually losing its prestigious profile as one of the safest and secure places in Nigeria. It is currently being overrun by kidnappers who are becoming brazen and deadly, uh, invading homes, public places, and laying siege at intersections and open highways. 
just taking their victims away and placing multi-million ransom on them. In one account uh, by the FCT Public Complaints Commissioner Dayuru Izekel Musa, he disclosed that 132 persons have been kidnapped with five killed within three months. Another media report says no fewer than 15 persons were kidnapped in the first two weeks of January 2024. That's an average of one person per day. And now, that is alarming. The concern of residents is palpable. Some are outraged, asking what is going on. On account of the rising wave of insecurity, there are reports of multinational conglomerates moving out of Abuja, also insinuations of embassies moving. It is even alluded that the moves to relocate some government departments out of Abuja may be connected to the current situation. These are some of the in, in, uh, what we are engaging in in the conversation on democracy in practice today as I shortly introduce my guest. You're welcome. We take a short break and we return to the conversation. Democracy in practice. Democracy in practice. Welcome back, Democracy in Practice on the Combined Transmission of Liberty Television and Liberty Radio. We're looking at insecurity as um, somehow has uh, enveloped uh, the federal capital territory. So much reports and actual uh, kidnappings that have uh, taken place within the territory in the past couple of weeks. I'm joined in the studio by uh, Malam Ahmad Sajo. He is a convener of uh, the Nigeria Agenda and uh, currently sitting as the chair of uh, the think tank of uh, pro-democracy and good governance platform, the political advantage group. He's also served at some, um, in, the, in the course of time, as a chairman information and strategy in the uh, northeastern part of Nigeria at the Maastricht. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. And hopefully we'll be joined by Dr. Uh, Sadiq Gombe, who is uh, uh, an executive, uh, deputy director of the Northern Elders Forum. Um, 
also we're expecting uh, Hamalan Saidu uh, He is the chairman of the group of upright northerners. So we'll be talking across a lot of the issues that this insecurity has thrown into the public space. First, um, Malan Sajjo, what do you make of the sudden wave of insecurity, especially kidnapping and abductions within the federal capital territory? Some come very close home, uh, abducting families right in their bedrooms. I, I, I want to say, you know, very sincerely that uh, this is indeed a worrisome situation, uh, a very disturbing situation for all of us. And, uh, but again, I am worried not just because of the kidnapping they do, but I am also worried because as usual, we, members of uh, the ruling elite, use every available opportunity to play up to the gallery rather than address the issues mm. the way they are. Mm. Uh, you notice that in the wake of the resurgence of kidnappings in Abuja, some members of the ruling elite have just started to you know, go for funding. And, 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 and trying to discover the ability, making mm. a name, mm. trying to make mm. a name. Just for the optics. For the optics. Just trying to make themselves visible, you know, in this. That I is tell riding you, on the misfortune of those victims. That, you know, for those of us that have addressed this issue, I was, for four years, I was a member of the State Security Council. Mm. I have worked very closely with the security agencies, military and co. We have I've gone as far as to Sambisa mm. with uh, security that agencies. That was while serving as the, as in the cabinet in, in, the in my state, yes. Adamawa. Mm. I, I understand that, you know, one of the, 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 the major, the oxygen, that criminals breathe to survive mm. is publicity. Mm. Don't allow them have publicity. Don't, don't allow publicity into the mix. By the time a prominent Nigerian says, we are gathering money to rescue people, that alone, if you notice, it increased the ransom demand. That's because you were, okay, you've made them important. Mm. We should avoid that. And we are also at a station in, in Nigeria today where opposing government has become a norm, mm. even where government is right. So if government says, like uh, the Minister of Defense, uh, His Excellency, mm. uh, Governor Badaru, mm. said, Badaru, yes, Badaru, said we should stop crowdfunding, we That's should it. stop... People just started opposing him because he was a government. Not because he was wrong, but because but we, no system can survive this kind of thing. Now, now I, I had cause to speak with uh, Dr. Peter, hmm. the, the young man that is responsible for coordinating security in the that's it, that's it. We had Actually, he was so, to have been here. We had, we had, the, we had the, some lengthy discussion with him, and I told him that, look, we cannot address this insecurity, especially in the FCT, unless we do two things. First and foremost, insecurity in Nigeria, northeast, north central, northwest, south south, whatever, is a product of the activities of conflict entrepreneurs. The people that are arrested and paraded as kidnappers from even the dress they wear, you know that they are not the beneficiaries of the uh, ransom. Uh, uh, honorable, we'll get, we'll get to that. Just, I'm uh, coming. Just let me also let, introduce... Let me land, let okay. me land quickly. <laughs> they are not the beneficiaries Absolutely. of the district. And this, the monies now are no longer paid in cash like they do before. They go through the banking system. Where is our BVL? Where is our NIM? Where is all the biometrics that we're taking? Where are they? What is happening? 
it's a critical question. Everybody is asking what really is up happening. Um, uh, he has just joined us, uh, Alaji uh, Seydou uh, Shehu. Uh, Bello, uh, he's, he's the chair of uh, the uh, group of upright northerners. Thanks for joining us. I mean, you, let's just, maybe you, you, you come in at this point. We're looking at insecurity in Abuja, the rising wave of it, and we see its expression mainly is in terms of the abduction and kidnapping of people, apart from other sundry crimes that have also enveloped the, what is your, what is your uh, response, your reaction to what is going on at the moment? Well, in any case, uh, my uh, co-presenter here mm. has already enumerated and uh, at least to date some points which I think uh, we should work on. Mm. Uh, to be frank, we have to call a spade a spade. That's critical at this there point. There is no gain saying that we should be hiding under the facade of uh, being mature or being something else. We have to come out truly and address the problem. Mm -hmm. It has happened not only in Nigeria, it has happened in, in Congo. Congo suffered the same fate we are, we are experiencing. Why? The fundamental fact is that what happened in Congo was a reflection of the you know, reaction of the multinational company in their countries, the Western countries. Mm -hmm. We don't have to run away from that. First, because of Cotin and the cobalt, mm -hmm. which was largely found in Congo. Even the most, you know, uh, productive area where these this mineral resources are being produced in the world, they have the largest. Instead of promoting trade relations within the international uh, uh, system, system you know, the multinational corporations will far to come and uh, take up, you know, by force, after having force, you know, in this, killings, mining, and other things are coming. So eventually, you find out in Congo, and up to now, since the beginning of this crisis in Congo, about 9 million people have been killed. Now, and bring it to Nigeria. Hour, I'm coming. In every one hour, 40 women are being raped, simply because to have access to the land and access to the mineral resources. This is exactly what's happening in Nigeria today. Starting from uh, Meduguri, Koko, Northeast, is from Adama State. And uh, if you look at the rising influence of insurgency, you find out it is as a result of the solid mineral that has been found a long time ago in the Northeast. California, gold, uh, uranium, and what have you, all the sub regions of that area. Hmm. In 1932, Hitler made an attempt, you know, to look at the place through the satellite and he brought his German people to at least capture the area. But unfortunately, after the demise of uh, uh, Hitler, the matter died out. It came up shortly after the civil war in Nigeria. Are you saying that it's also a reflection, it's a reflection, it's, a, it, it's also captured in what is going on within the SCT? How do we draw the link? The let's link let's, let's establish the link. Now, th there are two things. After I have enumerated the issue of the uh, solid mineral resources that we have, and the drawing attention of the multinational corporations, then you come back and see the kidnappings in the uh, federal capital. And the fundamental issue is how would other Western countries have access to Northern Nigeria to fight the Sahel. And the fighting Sahel, you know, is to remove the regime and to recolonize the place and to continue with the exploitation of their resources. So it is not an exception because already I was reading in, in, in one of the social media mm. uh, platforms that France is looking for uh, this government to allow them to come and fight terrorism within the FCT and uh, beyond, you know, in the north. But if you recall, in, 19, in 2019, women from the northeast came to, the, uh, to Abuja 
and the office of, of, of uh, 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 France, uh, French embassy, they staged a, a demonstration. Women staged a demonstration and resisted what is happening, you know, in the country because they are the one financing the terrorist activities in the northeast. They finance them, they equip them with, with, with arms, and they, 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 they supply them with the food and water and the money. So now, after the staging of the coup, if you recently look at what happened today, uh, the National uh, 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 Security Advisor to the President, Malam uh, Nuhrubadu, recently had a composition with a, a French ambassador. He was appealing to him that Nigeria wants to be remain in peace. Maybe you may have seen it in the uh, social media, it has been circulated, you know, that he was appealing to them, please allow us to survive. To, to, to Are you allow saying us that to what we're seeing in this FCT can be linked to a French neo-colonialist interest? Exactly. Because they have been... Does that make they, sense? Excuse me. Because they have been depleted in the Sahel. The most dangerous place that uh, they have lost is Niger, uh, Burkina Faso and Mali because they have been exploiting their resources for long. And now, with the influence and the involvement of Russia, you know, in the Sahel region, has created a stable foundation for the destruction of the economic development and prosperity of, uh, of France. So after they have been chased out in France, they have to look at a meaningful way, you know, of going back. Either Are you saying, okay, under the circumstance, <laughs> can we say, I mean, because this is a, this is a very heavy position to take. Yes, it's very heavy. It. It's also uh, uh, bringing something new into the public space. Exactly. Are we saying that, I, I'll direct this question at you. Well, 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 Are we saying that the Nigerian government is oblivious of the subterranean interest, so to speak, mm -hmm. of the French government and that it's, why will the Nigerian government and operatives of the state be telling us something different from what we're hearing now? Of course, I'm saying what you mean, what well, has done with the ambassador and it's been all over the social media. Why did you have to resort to that? Well, I could recall in 2019, I was invited away to discuss this issue. And we said, if you really want to address the problem of terrorism and other things, we have to look at the role being played by the international community. For instance, at the wake of the Boko Haram attack in, in the Northeast, what happened? A spokesman of the White House during Obama was asked what is happening in Nigeria. Can't the United States of America intervene? He said, no. We are, no, we are not interested in that. Mm -hmm. What we are interested in is that if it is North African, uh, 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 white North Africa, America has the capability, has everything to go and fight. But for the black uh, North, uh, West Africa, uh, Sub Saharan West Africa, no. We have the capacity, we have the capability of doing that. But what, what does that supposed to mean? The Nigerian government has been crying, shouting for the United States of America to list Boko Haram as one of the terrorist group and block their financial uh, 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 sources. Uh, sources. But they didn't. Okay. So now you can Let's draw an inference from there. Why and what happened? What and do you think is happening? Let's, let's be very pointed about this. What do you think is happening? What is happening now yes. is that how do we clear the way in the FCT? And by way of our reaction, I think you have seen the... Uh, we'll come to, yes, we'll come to your reaction. We'll come to your reaction. Let me come to that uh, before going to the reaction itself. The reason no, I want, want him to, to, I want him to... Um, <laughs> I need a second opinion on this... <laughs> Pardon the expression, this yeah. bombshell that you put on the table. I need a second yeah. opinion. Okay, um, let me tell you that. I'm asking this yes. advisedly because yes. I've, I know that you've also been part of and the I'm, security want, architecture I'm, apparatus want, to deal with situations like this. I want, to, I want like to, this. to tell you yes. that. As a commissioner every, for strategy. Every, outside that, every insecurity situation we are facing in Nigeria today, including what we're facing here, is externally induced. It's externally induced. induced. And it is always a conflict about resources. Mm. But you see, it's not uh, in our interest mm. to reduce it simply to that level and excuse the failures of our own state apparatus. Mm. Now, why, why am I saying so? You know, the the insurgency in the northeast became intense mm. 
came because there was a scramble for resources at the lectured basis. According to the French, they will tell you, say, the problem to the, to the, to the basic lectured. Mm. That's what they will tell you, is the problem of the lectured basis. That's the problem, that's the, the Fundamentally. Fundamentally. And if you notice, because it's a problem of the basis, the lectured basis itself, France was heavily involved to the extent that at one point in time, Nigeria was using Chad to negotiate for peace. <laughs> I can tell you this, because I'm, 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 I'm... You were part with. of the process and at some point. I do remember that I led a Nigerian delegation to Marwa to discuss on this issue, <laughs> you know, in a, in, in a conference that was, that had about seven of the West African states and Central African states in attendance. And these issues were very clear. And we had, we had difficulty. In fact, Nigeria was the only English-speaking country that was there. <laughs> and all the French-speaking <laughs> countries were trying to defend the role of France. But we knew that France had a subterranean interest. Mm -hmm. I agree. But despite that, mm -hmm. I also want to say that uh, Luckily, we all, we all speak outside here. But how she ate a bungoya age kadangare ke samo. We are partially responsible. Mm. I remember when Nyako was the governor of Adama State. At one point, when we had an interactable security skirmishes all over, he called all the traditional rulers and said, "Ti inda akiri kiche akara waninka." <laughs> yeah. And they, they, you know, they all, they all, they all set up. And Sorry, I, I, I need to take a short break. Wait, I'm then, then we'll pick it from we, that we, point. We, within a short period, mm. we had some deleted pieces. And when this this one was happening, while we were so there, the crack in the wall exactly. was blocked. Exactly. Now the major thing, and mm. let me put this one, if you like, before you go on your break. Mm. The major thing is that Nigeria has become a huge crime scene without criminals. Mm. People can point. do anything, and you will never That's hear this crime <laughs> that will go on without trace. Without, yes. No, not without trace. No, 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 no. Trace. We, we, know, we know everything, but that the, the criminals are appearing to be too strong for us to bring to book. That's and it. I told you before we started this, yes. that yes. this ragtag idiot that we see that they catch Pan and that call mind your language. Uh, well, whatever, <laughs> those, those, those criminals, <laughs> let me use <laughs> criminals, this ragtag criminals that catch people that they, they, they now arrest and parade for us without even decent dress could not have been the beneficiaries of the ransom. That's pay. a very serious matter because and I've had, you, I've, you, excuse me, you I've, I've had canvas in the public space. I've had only 25 times. That's exactly. it. I've had canvas in the public space that if you see the profile of the abductors and the, and the kidnappers, they look as hungry as some of the people they're even kidnapping. So, and they make uh, millions and multi millions so of ransom. Where is the money going conflict to? Conflict entrepreneurs are the beneficiaries of this. Company. Of course. We'll return to this conversation shortly. Uh, we're discussing um, the federal capital territory, the rising wave of insecurity within the, the territory, and the relocation as a fallout, perhaps, of uh, establishments, government, and uh, foreign establishments um, out of the FCT, and other more outrageous uh, consequences of the rising wave of insecurity in the country, or in the FCT. We'll return with this conversation shortly. Democracy in practice.
Democracy in Practice. Welcome back. Democracy in practice on the combined transmission of Liberty TV and Liberty Radio. We're reaching you from Abuja and we're discussing a very thorny issue at the moment. Insecurity that, have, that has enveloped the federal capital territory. Kidnappings from the beginning of this year from one of the accounts almost on a daily basis. I've had said by the Public Complaints Commissioner of the FCT, uh, Haladu Ezekiel Musa, that about 132 persons have been kidnapped and five killed in the past three months. That is outrageous, that is alarming, and that is unacceptable. And I'm in the studio with a gentleman who are very conversant with these issues and have a patriotic uh, exposure to how uh, it should be solved, but most importantly, understanding and giving insight to what is going on. Um, I've been in the studio with uh, Alaji uh, Saidu uh, Bello. He is the chairman of the group of uh, uh, Upright Northerners. I, I like the ring of that name, Upright, because that's something that is in, sh in short supply within the public space in Nigeria. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm also in the studio with um, Alaji Ahmed Sajo. He served in a very, let me say, security inclined <laughs> position as a cabinet member in um, Adama State, Northeast Nigeria, as Commissioner for Information and Strategy. He's also the, the convener of the Nigeria Agenda and currently sits as the chair of the think tank of uh, the uh, political advantage group, a good governance, pro democracy uh, platform uh, in the country. Thanks for joining us. Okay. We've also been joined by Dr. Sadiq Kumbe. Um, he would have been here much earlier, but we had some bit of uh, issue with our geography. <laughs> Dr. Sadiq uh, Gombe is the Deputy Director of Operations of the Northern Elders Forum. <laughs> Thanks for joining us finally. We've been talking about, I think you need to do some catch up. We've been talking about the insecurity within that has enveloped the federal capital territory, especially the spate of kidnappings that, be, that are, is now taking the, the hoodlums and the criminals into homes of people and picking them off right in their homes at intersections. Several people have been picked. Here we've been told that some people have been rescued, but the situation is not abating. What is your reaction? How does it come to you that FCT that had a prime profile of safety and security and tranquility is going this route? I think uh, to some of us, the FCT is not different from the Nigerian society. It's super democratic in the remote areas of the capital as well. So to show that yes, we have come of it. Uh, we can dare you. Mm. So it's like daring the state now. Daring the state. Nigerian state, I mean the Nigerian state itself. Two, the issue of the insecurity in Abuja, if you look at from the session of this administration, mm. the policy of the new minister, whereby <laughs> the majority of those that have. Is it tied to what the minister is doing? I mean, if you said it's been with us for a while, the, the man is just there for a few months now. Yeah, the, the level of technology over the period of within seven months it is unprecedented. You are just saying about one thirty something. In three months? What? You are talking about one thirty something. I've also seen one eighty seven in seven months. That is the bad Yes. But what about only a certain date when people were celebrating their religious right, they were killed by the same military they're supposed to protect them? What of what happens in Black mm -hmm. Just at the eve of the Christmas, what happened with over 200 people died? Mm -hmm. So, what is surprising 
the one hundred and thirty new kidnapped in Abuja because it is the seat of power or what? So the issue is that our security architecture is almost collapsed. We have a lot, lot to do. And uh, it is so clear the issue of this insecurity, the level of lack of synergy between our security personnel. But they've been told otherwise that they are now more coordinated. There's a lot more synergy in the way the, the, the different arms of, the, of, of security operate. That they even have joint <laughs> operations and now. So from before up or after Kaduna, or is it after Christmas? We are just a, a month away from Christmas. Hmm. We are just about two months away from the incident of Kaduna, where over 250 also were killed by the same security agencies are supposed to protect it. So I think it is a whole lot of issue that needs to have an holistic architectural you know re-engineering mm -hmm. of our security system. Okay. Because if not there are a lot lot of issues that you cannot comprehend. Even if you are going through the social media, even this the issue of relocation of some government establishment and agencies to the former capital. And coming from where the new administration started from appointment from whatever. So please, uh, we'll come to that. It's part of what we want because it's a fallout. People some people have said. People are even thinking. Yeah. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Let, let so me that just try that. <laughs> that is that's a very serious allegation that has been put on the table. Not allegation. Mano Sergio, yeah. before we took that break, you had talked about a very damning situation where we have Nigeria turning into a crime field without criminals. Yeah. And, 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 and let me tell you, things that work. I mean, we, 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 are not faceless. we are supposed to benefit from technology. And technology can be used to trace. I know of a neighbor whose uh, family members were kidnapped. And unfortunately, you know, he doesn't understand how, so, and the kidnappers did not understand English. So they needed a go between. Hmm. And, they hmm. Hmm. and the kidnappers were using their phone, telling, please save this my number so that when I call, you don't say who is talking because that would make us angry. Save my number. And then payments are made. Somebody reported that he made payments through bank transfer. This is most of the payments are made through bank transfers. There, there, there are accounts and there are BBN. Then we have NICOM SATS, the Nigerian Satellite. satellite. Communication Com satellite. satellite. Mm. The, with, a, with a satellite, you could focus, beam your focus on any location within the And country. geolocate it. And geolocate it. That's it. Where, where are these people hiding? Why, why can't we geolocate where they are? But they can film their ceremonies, naming ceremonies, marriage ceremonies, and post it on social media. Hmm. You know, I've said it uh, on TV and I'm saying it also here. That these are human beings. Wherever they're living, they eat. Mm. To eat, they cook. Mm. When they cook, they cannot control the rise of the smoke. That's it. So if you have a surveillance, you will easily capture the smoke and know where human activity yes. is. So there are a lot of things. But I believe, very sincerely, that we have conflict entrepreneurs who, who are, are benefiting who from are it. connected with international terror conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And is this another conspiracy theory? We strongly <laughs> entrenched in the Nigerian system hmm. that they can commit offenses and get away with it until we are able to say, look, uh, this is the person that is responsible for... I remember, I always remember when these things happened. I was serving Governor Murtala Nyako when he was forcefully removed from office. That impeachment did not follow any of And you know his offense? He was able to capture, we, we, ca we, we caught some social, mis some, some, some criminals in one small hotel called Yola Motel. One small one in Yola town. We caught them with, head, with a catch of arms. Hmm. Now Nyako said, look, get me the serial numbers of this house. 
That was all he asked for. So we got him the serial numbers of the apps and we brought them. And he went and followed up because you can nobody sells apps for you mm. without you mm. signing mm. an end user mm. certificate mm -hmm. to mm. say this is what I'm going to use. And haven't been a military man in the first place. He went. The end user certificate was signed by somebody high up in government. Here. It made him go further. He went and dug deeper and got money transfers account numbers and things. Then he went and addressed a gathering in the U.S. and released this information. So from the day he came back, there was an order to get rid of him. And the House of Assembly impeached him in the most bizarre impeachment mm, process. But at the end of the day, he left. He had to run because they said if they had caught him, he would have been killed. What, what am I trying to say? until and unless we are able to and this is where we are now we northerners are talking about relocation and the rest well fine fine but the important thing is that how come you know the security the heads of the the security establishment are our own brothers and sisters we should reach out to them and talk to them do not allow this thing happen to you Already, the North is, it is on fire. The Northwest has become on fire. The North Central is on fire. How come we are facing this kind of situation all over Northern Nigeria? If we cannot secure our people, even if we say they should not carry uh, things to, okay, let them not carry it. It will be of no value to somebody who is running for his life. That is it. Mm. So we need to be secured. Now, I read your statement, uh, um, uh, Alejibello, mm. the uh, group of uh, upright uh, northerners. northerners. Mm. I mean, it also ties into what uh, Dr. Uh, Sadiq Gumbe started talking about. Mm. That statement is not happy with these moves to move certain agencies out of um, Abuja, out to Lagos. It's also not happy with and he's trying to, the statement tried, I mean, kind of, try to do a link, I mean, that is your position, a link between the insecurity that is going on now and surreptitious move uh, to, to use the insecurity as an excuse to relocate not just the agencies, but the capital out of, of uh, Abuja. Do you have a, a basis for this position? Uh, the position, uh like I told you from the beginning of this uh, conversation. Uh, conversation when I mm. came in, I told you we are going to uh, call a spade a spade, no matter what to be the implication or the consequences. If you look at the time of Ndeko after the June 12 crisis, mm. so to speak, a little back historical background, mm. the, president, the present president was an active member of an Afenipere and Ndeko who left the country to fight the Zen military government. What did he say when he was interviewed? He does not believe in Nigeria as a country. And now he is the president of this country. Time has passed. He drew an analogy hmm. with that previous statement and what is going on today. I am pretty sure the Nigerian security architecture is not incapable of dealing with these matters. I'm telling you, they have the capacity to do it. They have the capacity to deal with any uh, uh, nuisances in, uh, in Abuja and even within the country. But unfortunately, because of the trend of the inactive of the government to address this problem, is what is giving them the advantage. You know, take the advantage to take this federal capital back to where it came from. But the fundamental... Well, can we say with certainty that, well, that the government wants to move the federal capital out of, of Abuja? Course. Can we say it is, at this point, speculative? Look, it's not spe speculative. You know what I'm saying? Is it a lie that <laughs> some departments from the CBN are taking uh, going back to, to, to yes. Lagos? And, uh, That's and a fund is also a lie. Right? The fund that are supposed to uh, that have been directed to go back to to to, to, to Lagos is it is it is it a, 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 a lie? And the, the attempt by the multinational corporations and the Nigerian embassies that they will relocate back to Lagos because of the insecurity in Abuja is it a lie? 
Yeah? So we are not just trying to draw an inference where we will just accuse the government without uh, 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 any having any facts. Well, it, it has been displayed. So virtually we have to sit down and make a micro and a micro analysis of the situation. And even within the context of the historical development of Nigeria, mm. you make statement. We always judge you by the statement you make. And look at the issue that we are supposed to be uh, uh, to even address, the constitutional matter of the country. Mm. It has been berated. All ministries and uh, government agencies must be in the federal capital. And it's, actually, it was, it's actually captured in the, in, the, in the Constitution. Well, it has been captured in the Constitution. If now you said they should be relocated somewhere, who gave them the mandate? Is it the Constitution or his own discretion? And why is it he did not give the executive order for, 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 for this movement of uh, MD, uh, MDS? He has to give the executive order for that. But he knew there was there constitutional issue, that's why he refused. And they allowed them to give only a circular for them to go. Was it plenty excuses? Sorry, let me, read, uh, let, let me read something for you from uh, the um, fan. It says that um, there's a step where there was a statement issued by FAN and uh, was signed by the Director of Public Affairs and Consumer Protection, Mrs. Obiagili Ora. And I'll just read a paragraph from there, from, from it. It says, uh, FAN wishes to inform Nigerians that the following, cons that following wide consultations by the new management of FAN with stakeholders, which also involved the unions. It was agreed that this was in the best interest of the authority and the country for now for the following reasons, and it aligned a lot of reasons. You are with the Northern Elders Forum. Elders, I mean, you are stakeholders in this, and you've already been complaining that the movement, the process of the movement is faulty. Well, was the forum consulted Excuse as a stakeholder? Me. Sorry, let us know. Before going to him, <laughs> because he has to give the final order of that. But you ask me. Yes. And uh, part of what I saw, what uh, Begley has uh, yes, written, Begley. Yeah. it was it's just superficial. Because she did not act within the provisions of the constitution of the country. Who is she? She doesn't have that fundamental right. Although I know there are a lot of problems in Nigeria where the constitution of the country has been abused within the democratic setting. What brought uh, 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 Tinubu? What brought him is the constitution, the democracy itself, and all the provisions of the constitution also have been deleted by the courts and declared him a winner. Of course, sorry, I agree with sorry, that. Sorry, Allegedly, I still need to cut you. We're going to take a commercial break and then we'll return to this. We'll, we'll take a commercial break and return to this conversation. Um, we'll be right back to continue this conversation shortly. Democracy in practice. Wherever you are in the world, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Matches live on Star Times.
Yeah, welcome back, Democracy in Practice on the Combined Transmission of Liberty TV and Liberty Radio. Elizabeth Law, before we went on that break, you were on, on a path to landing on some, some kind of uh, position. Yes, what we are saying is that all the MDs agencies are under ministers. So if ministries are structurally constitutional, that they should be in the federal capital. The movement of any uh, government agencies should be constitutional within the framework of the House of Representatives or House of Assembly or the last. They should sit down and discuss. <laughs> We don't care. The fact is that they should give us a more, more reason why they should do that. More reason why, because we are being skeptical over it. The, uh, uh, when somebody just on the social media platform has posted that, uh, why is it they said the building of uh, CBN cannot contain the staff? The fact is that he said there are offices which are to be occupied by 5,000 people. Why is it now the population in that can be transferred to Social media posting should not be a no. basis for taking a position. Uh, but at least we have the government, they should respond. But if you attack the president tomorrow, his uh, 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 director of, uh, of this will come and respond. So they should respond and tell us and convince us. <laughs> okay. What do you think uh, you act with... Uh, no. Yeah, because I just read a statement that wide consultations are with stakeholders. And I do believe that now that you're raising a voice, you are a stakeholder. I am involved as the Deputy Director General of Operations for the Northern Hemisphere. That's it. And I'm virtually involved with most of the fora in Northern Nigeria. And I want to assure you from the insight that we have, there is none of this is forum or so the way. Consulted. Neither I consulted with some of our members at the National Assembly and Senate. They were not involved. And indeed, what uh, Liz Bello is saying, part of the oversight function, mm -hmm. oversight of the National Assembly members, involves things to do with this MDS. So they were supposed to be consulted. Or rather, if you don't want to go through that, you pass an executive order which you have to go through some processes mm -hmm. that has to do with the limitation of the constitution and mm -hmm. you are, you know, powers as the president with the constitution gave you. So apart from the, like, the issue of CBN, if you are telling us offices are mm -hmm. not enough, mm -hmm. for God's sake, I want to tell you there are a thousand and one strategic buildings that were seized from corrupt politicians by the EFCC. Mm -hmm. The government has the liberty to use them. The government has the liberty to buy properties in Abuja. If you go around this Abuja, you find estate. They also and talked about, but they talked well, about saving houses, costs. The, you know, houses there. They also talked about saving it, costs. It's too expensive to stay in Abuja. It's saving. It's mm. even easier. They are already here. Their families are here. And so on. <laughs> so this the center. There is the primary purpose of having Abuja as the capital of Nigeria because of the central location, the central location of Abuja mm. and for the unity purpose of the country. Okay, Doctor. There's something, for security mm. there's something I've been trying to un understand. Which is proximity to all the other regions of this country. Mm. It matters. Mm. So also, when you are in the heat of this appointment here and there and so on. You know Nigerians, definitely there are a lot of suspicion, particularly when you try to, yes, dance the gallery by being, you know, trying to fall to the allegations and so on. So I think it's unfair. As a president, you are constitutionally sorry, just like a lady. This is about the president that came that emerges with the least number of votes in Nigeria, only 8, 8 million. In the history of Nigeria from 1999 today, all the presidents that... At this point, isn't that position immaterial? It's immaterial. 
Why is it material? You would have to certify only two criteria to be elected. For the one to up to 12% of 24 states in the area. I think all of that, I say it is material because there is a Supreme Court pronouncement that arrested whatever may but have been there. If we are right, if we are wrong. My, I, I, I think there is a need for some interjection here. That's it. We are, if we think or we believe very sincerely mm. that we are concerned as northerners, mm. I'm not saying, look, moving uh, facilities out of Africa I think that's the right word. or to anywhere mm. uh, is a healthy development in the polity for whatever reason. I am more worried by the nexus he was trying to create mm. between the insecurity and the movement that's of it. the party. That is the worrying part, part of it. It's yeah. worrying. It's very but, but let me also say one thing. And this is what we should you know, look ourselves in the face and tell ourselves the naked, the honest truth. You see, in the North, our concern should be how do we develop Northern Nigeria? Mm -hmm. You know, when Fan had always been in Lagos, mm -hmm. a Northern Minister of Aviation mm -hmm. moved it Fan to Abuja. That's Hadi Senka. Yes. But unfortunately, when Fan was in Abuja, Port Harcourt, eh, two airports were built in Port Harcourt by the federal government. An airport was built by the federal government in Akure. An airport was built by the federal government in Ibadan. And even the Yanagua airport mm. was built by the federal government. Mm. Now, Bauchi was built by Bauchi state government. Gombe was built by Gombe state government. Mm -hmm. Taraba, uh, Jalingo was built by, by, by Taraba so, state so government. Jigawa? What? Jigawa was built by Jigawa mm -hmm. state government. What are we saying? It, for me, it doesn't matter where Fan is located. If they are building airports in the southern part of the country, they should build airport in the northern part of the country. I am looking at our argument within the context of development. Mm. We have had a government that was headed by ourselves and our brothers and sisters in the last eight years. What is happening? The, high, the level of multidimensional poverty in the north mm -hmm. is almost 70%. No, no, no. The last I heard was in oh, Sokoto, for instance. Mm -hmm. It is 91 91%. 91%, exactly. exactly. No, no, the northern average. No, no, I'm no, joking. Yes. So I'm coming. Mm -hmm. eh? The number of out of school children in the northern Nigeria is around 70-80%. So what are we saying? Yet it is in this same northern Nigeria that somebody takes a helicopter every day from one city to the other to play golf and go back. But we, 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 we are not, uh, my brother, upright. We should start talking to ourselves. We should start telling ourselves that the misdemeanors of our brothers in leadership, you were the one that said the moment they started interrogating certain social miscreants, certain big men yeah. began to complain. Mm -hmm. We have sold off ourselves. We must begin to look, you know, we must do, begin to do introspection on ourselves and see what are we doing. My, what I want us to, to try to locate, all of us that are discussing this issue now, is there a nexus, is there a connection between the sponsors of this insecurity and the sponsors of politicians who won election. Mm. Why are politicians getting becoming dif why is it becoming difficult for political leaders to gather sufficient political will to go after the sponsors of insecurity? Mm. Is it is the the the, 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 the the international dimension is it real? Mm. Does it have a diplomatic? This, these are really constant questions that, that, that we that must address. We are, you know, because let me tell you, the, 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 there can be no. It's not possible. It's not possible for there to be oil in chat around the lake chat. Oil in Cameroon around the Lake Chad, and there is no oil in Nigeria around the Lake Chad. If you look at it, if you look at the map, we are even at the sloppy part. Mm. So if oil is supposed to be if we mm. have to have flow like a gradient yes. on our own side of, of the Lake Chad. But they said we have no oil. Now that they have discovered oil called money, money, they've realized that we really have oil in that 
the Chad Basin and the Benue Trough, all of it, Benue Gongola Trough, all of it has oil and gas. Mm -hmm. There is now a heightened insecurity around there. Now, the FCT, the FCT has been very peaceful until recently. What really went wrong? Fundamental question it, that where, everybody is asking. Is is it, what is, is going it on within the FCT? Within the FCT? And why is it that with all the formations that these kidnappers could have the audacity to even go into military establishment estate yes. and pick people. I live somewhere near a barrack that is inhabited by mobile policemen. And just behind that barrack, they abducted a woman with a six-month-old baby. And that the baby was crying in the bush until they disappeared. What is happening? How can we get to do that? And then we have, we live with informants within communities. Mm -hmm. Why is it difficult to fish them out? To fish out our informants. We go through, and I'm repeating again, we use telephones that are supposed to be linked to our need. We use banks that are supposed to be linked to our BVN. We, we use, they use, they use these, these things, and yet we are unable to fish. If I have, if I have a bank account, I should be able to locate you. If I have your phone number, I should be able to locate you. This is the way the thing is configured. And I said, we have a whole satellite company, we, you know, Natchcom Sat, Natchcom Sat, with satellite up there that can do locate anywhere in Nigeria. We even have the cheapest device, the one we use for, for Google Map, hmm. can also geolocate people everywhere. Incidentally, Dr. Not, Sadiq is also... <laughs> why are we not using all of this? Yes. Why are we not using all of this <laughs> to locate now, these people? The, 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 my problem here is Abuja belongs, I mean, center of unity, belongs to everyone. Why is it only voices from the north? crime wolf with the relocation of agencies. No, in reality, even I mean, should we turn everything into regional interest? Is, is it about the geography? That is, is development about the geography of where this will come from? Why is it the only northern interest that are crying foul? But the question, we, we have to ask a question here. Do you want to tell me the Nigerian security operatives overtly or covertly does not know what is going on. This is a big question we have to ask. Look, DSS. No, you have not addressed because I'm we are coming. speaking for a I'm, I'm group of northern upright and me. upright northerners. We are coming. Yes. We are coming to that. Why is, yes. why is this the north voice, northern voice that is loudest in this relocation thing? Because but when, because a, when an agency goes to Lagos, we, have, we, we will have the longer distance <laughs> to reach the place. That is one. <laughs> Two, our, our people, our young men that are working here in Abuja, yes. that they can easily come from Adama, Jos, Plato, uh, Meduguru to Abuja. Yes. If they what about, the young, what about the young men that are in Yenobra coming to Abuja? Uh, excuse me. Yes, this is the center of the country. It the is the same distance. Is it not the same distance? Yeah. The fact is that yourself. if married women that are working here are transferred to Lagos, hmm. consider the exigencies that will be put to these people. Hmm. About 5,000 people are going to, 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 to Lagos. And with the congestion of Lagos, if you go to Lake here and you want to pass through uh, 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 this thing, you will take eight hours before you go out of that uh, Oslo. How would they cope with that uh, uh, serious problems? So there is nothing we can say we cannot address. The fact is that you do not make attempt. Because many people now, from the report we have been receiving, is that they are saying instead of us to go to Lagos, we will resign. Mm. So when you take them to Lagos, you have the, you give the president the the, 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 the the leverage to employ his people over there, and then the press and more crisis will continue because most of our boys will not go and they will stay here and without job. At the end of which, what will be the consequences? 
insurgency everywhere, kidnapping everywhere, banditry everywhere. So eventually, okay. uh, at this point, that's the focus at which we have to address as upright northerners mm. to come out physically and show the president that he is not a president of Lagos State. He's a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and he has to maintain the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria because he has sworn in to defend it. He has sworn in, you know, as a Muslim. He was given only Quran to, to defend the Nigerian constitution and defend the country and defend the people of this country within the context of security, economically, politically, and socially. So if we have any problem that will even come on the, under that perspective, we have to address it and talk to him. It's not a question of regional, uh, yes, yes. regional question. It's a question of the Federal Republic, uh, Republic of Nigeria. It's a question of the people. Even the South South people are saying they are not going to Lagos. The, the, the South East people are saying they are not going to Lagos because they knew the implication of going to Lagos. Even to transport yourself to Lagos with these serious insecurities in our, in our roads. Okay. So, and most of us may even have money to, to, to take air transport this, down this, to Lagos. This, this, conversation, so this conversation is still based on a speculative platform because the federal government has not officially announced the relocation of the capital to Lagos. But no. we need to stimulate conversation. Balkanization is on the process. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a process of balkanization of the country. Okay. Let me tell you. Let, let because, uh, excuse me, hmm. you are missing one fundamental point. Hmm. The issue of Niger and the issue of France and the government. That's the nexus that's that's the that's the that's we need to really it establish. Is, it is, it's it's fundamental, fundamental, I agree. a fundamental issue that we must address. Yes. Because France is saying they are coming to have Nigeria in the north to cover our terrorism. Who are the terrorists? From where do they come from? Who sponsored them? Who, who armed them? Who trained them? Why is it the national security of the uh, advisor to the president who was appealing to, 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 to French uh, ambassador oh, sorry, yes. to, to police uh, aid and the help Nigeria to have security? Why? I mean, if that's the case, hmm. they should cut off the diplomatic relation with any country that is found, you know, sponsoring a, 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 a training and arming the, the, the terrorist group. That has to be established. It has to be established, of okay. course. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sadiq, if we want to interject at this point. The issue is not just about originalism or whatever. Mm. This government is a democratic government. The democratic government is supposed to be government of the people by the people. Mm. And that was why initially I was telling you that for you to emerge, you have to certify this and that. Mm. The president happens to win the election after the Supreme Court judgment by having won 25 seats in all the 19 northern states. All the 19 northern under contestation in Congo, so good, 25 percent in all the country. I think we only 15 states across the country. Mm. No, I mm. That is only in the good 25 percent in all the 19 northern states. Equally, second, second criteria is for you to have the majority of both from broadcast, which the votes that he got from the north stood at about 67 to 69 percent of the total vote in the country of the 8.7. Mm. So that means whatever we can do politically, we have the greatest reform to be. To negotiate, we need to, we have to be respected more than him because of many yeah. democracy. Two, so, the issue of suspicion that we need to all this in the mm. Look at Mambina Flower Hydro Power Project. Look at the command that we are talking about. Look at the Ajakuta. These are three key projects that can lead to the development of Nigeria and even getting us out of most of the crisis we are having, economic mm. crisis, mm. that has connection with the insecurity, whatever you can think of. No one was budgeted for Mandela in the last budget. The Kolmani, Bochu Bombay, oil drilling stopped. Silent at the moment. Silent at the moment. Mm -hmm. What about the doctor? Then now, relocation and other things. So if you, <laughs> you see, there are a lot of things. There are, there are a lot of things. It's not just about speculation, hmm. you know. So I think he needs to come back.
Now, now you can see how what we may have just waved aside as a simple insecurity matter within the FCT is snowballing into bigger issues. Um, at the moment, do we have um, a state understanding, institutional understanding, a mechanism to address all this, this myriad of um, issues that are, I mean, do, certainly we're going to be having domino effect if these things are not dealt with at this point. Mm -hmm. Now, institutionally, as a state, the apparatus of state, is it sufficiently aware of the, the likely fallout the and therefore addressing it? Well, not everybody is aware. Anybody that tells you they are not aware, they are lying. They are lying. It's just as you yeah. see, you see the problem, is, the problem of this country. In yeah, the, elite consensus on this matter. The, no. The, the Can we draw an elite consensus country, on this matter? No. The problem of this country is in your leadership recruitment process, mm -hmm. we are recruiting people who believe in just bread and butter politics. Never thinking through anything. Nothing. So when you're talking like this, you was talking about Mambila. Mambila, who killed Mambila? Northerners. Hmm. The last minister of power that Muhammad Buhari had to fight himself, hmm. who does not sack ministers, had to sack, hmm. Hmm. was from Taraba State. Hmm. Mambila is in Taraba State. He spent two years and some months. He took no action. In fact, as a matter of fact, it was claimed that for the period he stayed, he stayed in Hilton. He had a house here in Abuja. Stayed throughout in Hilton. We are, we are talking about, you know, aviation. The last aviation minister was from the north. Apart from the fact that I told you he did not advance the development of airports in northern Nigeria. What did he do? The, we, we, we were hoping that he will even, we even told him because the north is far, it has more greater distance that he should have even had policies to encourage regional airlines within the northern block mm. because our distances are, are farther than yes, any other part of did the country. He, do it? he did not. We are talking about, you know, if you go to anywhere, you know, today God in his infinite mercy, you know, despite our security challenges, God in his infinite mercy has given us all the, the, the defense ministers, two defense, the ministers of defense, minister of defense and the minister of state, the national security advice, these are all northerners. It's at their time for us to all sit down as a people to say we need a safe and secure environment, at least for our people to pursue their legitimate enterprises, That's especially it. in agriculture. That's because it. next to this insecurity, we're going to face food insecurity. Mm -hmm. Because our people are not allowed to go and have this. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. We need to wrap up at this point. Um, I can just give you maybe a few seconds to say a passing shot. Briefly. So I think briefly, uh, briefly, please. But the most important is also the issue of out of school children that he is. Whereas 10.2 million, out of this 10.2 million, 9.8 are all UNESCO says 22 million. Yes. And this 98, 50 percent of them are all nomads. So we want to fight insecurity. 50 percent of the out of school children, 50 percent are nomads living in the bush and so on and so on, no school, no any skin, that's no it, any enterprise. So we need to address so, that. there is no any development to do with them. So we need to address that. So how can we tackle that? And equally the leadership recruitment process whereby we need to start to elect competent representatives. If we are competent representatives, the issue of, you know, organizing here will not have arisen. We will have talked to our representatives. Stop organizing. Stop organizing. Stop organizing. What's your passing shot, yeah? What's your take away? What's your take uh, my, I agree with him, but uh, leadership recruitment in this perspective cannot, ca cannot be achieved within the northern spheres of political influence because 90% of our elites have already compromised to the uh, sorry, 
United States. But what we are going to do now, and the task ahead of us, as we talk ourselves as an uh, upright group, mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with other uh, serious like-minded like -minded people, mm -hmm. no matter who, from where they come from, very soon we are going to create an avenue we should come up with a very fundamental resolutions, you know, on uh, all the elites who are serious, who have uh, right thinking uh, uh, perspective, we should go and uh, hijack all the political parties of Nigeria. <laughs> that is the only... I will not encourage no, that no, no, on no, this no, platform. No, no, no. I'm not saying we should fight. No. Okay. What okay. I'm saying we should ha hijack in the public. Inf okay. Mo most Infiltrate the move, move in. Move in. Okay. Okay. And, and get the leadership. Get it. And, and, and we get it. Once you have very serious people in all the political parties, you will be able to produce the best candidate that will work for the nation and that will address the fundamental crisis we are facing at the moment. So look, but, yes. Yes, I think it, the important thing now is, to, is for the thinking class to begin to arise and get into this because governance is a serious business. Yes. We've been talking about insecurity, a rising wave of insecurity uh, within the federal capital territory and the my rate of domino effects, let's put it that way. Issues that have that are uh, um, become the aftermath of this insecurity. For instance, the concerns in part of the country, mainly in the north, about the relocation of certain establishments, including government establishment and uh, uh, for foreign businesses, uh, from I mean, out of Abuja. The hope is that Abuja and the rest of Nigeria will become safe, secure for people to pursue their livelihoods in peace and in safety and for the advancement of, uh, of the nation. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for sharing your thoughts on, on this platform. Uh, Alegi Saeedo Bello, mm. Chairman um, of no, Group of Upright Northerners. I like the ring of it, <laughs> especially <laughs> in the upright part. Yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, yeah. insightful contribution. And uh, Mylon Ahmed Asajo, you've always been forthright and appreciate your, your input. Thank you very much. Uh, he is the chairman of the Think Tank uh, um, Political Advantage Group and uh, convener the Nigeria Agenda. Thank you very much. Dr. Sadiq Gombe is the Director General Oper Deputy Director General North, uh, Operations of the Northern uh, Elders Forum. Thank you very much uh, for for your thoughts and contribution. And that's it on democracy in practice. We'll be back again to continue this conversation with the sole purpose of deepening democracy within the Nigeria space. Thanks for being with us. Democracy in practice.